Previously on DNA and RNA. The testimony of my expert witness will not only clear my client of all wrongdoing, but will also reveal the identity of the true killer of our poor departed Mr. Bones. Nucleic acids are the molecules that cells use to store, transfer, and express genetic information. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's the molecule which stores genetic information in an organism. That makes the nucleotide the most basic subunit of DNA, or more generally, of any nucleic acid. So, Professor, you told us that a DNA nucleotide consists of a phosphate group, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Can you tell us how nucleotide structure pertains to the case at hand? Oh, yes. You see, you need to understand the chemistry behind DNA to fully appreciate the importance and function of the molecule. The phosphate group and sugar are the same in every nucleotide, but there are four different nitrogenous bases, guanine, adenine, thymine, and cytosine. They are often abbreviated by the first letter of each nitrogenous base, G, A, T, and C. They essentially function as a four-letter alphabet, or if I may make an analogy to the case at hand, the information in DNA is like a recipe in one of our poor victim's cookbooks. Reading the DNA code ultimately tells a cell how to make proteins that it can use to perform various functions necessary for life. For instance, reading a specific sequence of DNA tells one cell how to make hemoglobin protein to carry oxygen molecules throughout the body. On the other hand, another cell might read a different recipe which tells it how to make insulin protein to control blood sugar levels. Oh, and reading or transcribing DNA is really an intriguing process. Yes, Professor. I'm sure DNA transcription is very interesting, but let's stick to the basic characteristics of DNA that pertain to the trial at hand. You were telling us about the nitrogenous bases. Oh, uh, yes, you're quite right. The bases can be categorized into two different groups. The single ring nitrogenous bases, thymine and cytosine, are called pyrimidines. And the double ring bases, adenine and guanine, are called purines. Oh yes, uh, I guess you might wonder how I can remember that. But it's really quite simple. All gods are pure. Adenine and guanine are purines. And by process of elimination, that means cytosine and thymine have to be pyrimidines. See? Yes, yes, that's a very nice mnemonic aid. Adenine and guanine are purines, but we're getting off track. You were telling us why the chemical structure of nucleotides is important. Oh, yes. The chemistry of nitrogenous bases is really the key to the function of DNA. It allows something called complementary base pairing. You see, cytosine can form three hydrogen bonds with guanine, and adenine can form two hydrogen bonds with thymine. Or, more simply, C bonds with G, and A bonds with T. It is called complementary base pairing because each base can only bond with a specific base partner. The structures complement each other in a way like a lock and key. C will only bond with G, and A will only bond with T in DNA. Because of complementary base pairing, the hydrogen-bonded nitrogenous bases are often referred to as base pairs. Remember how I said that DNA polynucleotides look like